Why, hello, lover. <laughs> that sounded more debonair in my head, I'll admit. Do you need something? Yes, we do, indeed. We need a support build for Act 2, and we need it to be absolutely incredible. Of course. Hey, yo, folks. This is Shandran here. Welcome along. And today we're going to be taking a look at the updated version of my Shadowheart build. This build is for when you hit Last Light Sin, and it's using items that you can find before that point. I'm level 8, and the build is going to be set up for level 8. It is a full-on support build, it is not focused on dealing damage, but it still has access to all wizard and cleric spells at full caster level with all that that entails. Fireball, guardian spirits, etc. But what you want to be doing with this build is supporting your other characters. A lot of the support is in the itemization, so we're going to go over that after we've gone over the build. Let's just jump straight into the build here. For our first level, we're taking a level of cleric. For the cantrips, we are choosing, in order of importance, Guidance, Late Ward, and Sacred Flame. If you prefer, you can get Resistance early instead of one of them, but I wouldn't. For our subclass, we are choosing the Light Domain, both because it sort of fits with her character, and because we get the access to the awesome ability Warning Flare. Shield yourself with the Divine Light, use your reaction to impose disadvantage on an attacker, possibly causing the attack to miss. This will later upgrade to work for your allies as well, making her an awesome support. Light Domain also has some very strong um, domain spells, but that is less relevant. For our abilities, we are going with Strength 12. This is because we don't really have anything else to use the abilities for, so we might as well put them into Strength for a little extra jumping distance. And I guess that's a hit chance with a weapon we are rarely using. Dexterity 14 allows us to get the most benefit out of our Meteor Armor. Constitution 16 is for the highest concentration saving throws possible. Intelligence 8, because our intelligence doesn't matter, we are going to be using a headband of intellect to set it to 17. Wisdom 16, because wisdom is our casting ability and we want it to be as high as possible. And Charisma 8, because Charisma doesn't matter. For our skills, History, this is the only one we can choose that's um, remotely relevant, Persuasion is not going to be. And we are going to up our, our intelligence in a while at least. She also gets Religion and Insight, because she's Shadowheart, and or because she's Acolyte I guess. And medicine as well. Going straight into level 2, we are going to start with the other interesting level here. One single level of wizard is all we are going to be using. For cantrips we are picking up mage hand, and then whichever ones of the damaging ones that you do not have already. If you don't have a character that can cost minor illusion, you should pick this up here, but I do, so I won't. I'll just be taking bone chill and poison spray to have different versions of this. I think I also might have acid uh, splash on a scroll already, I'm not certain. But get all the ones you can get, so you have as many different versions of um, elemental damage as possible, so you can change between which one is relevant for the situation. For your level 1 wizard spells, when you're leveling, of course, these are more important, but at this point they're not too, one, too important. Find Familiar is good. Shield can be good, but most of the time you're using your reaction for something else. It's, it's a good one to have anyways. If you do not have anyone with long stride and enhanced leap, you should take them here, but I do. I like having access to Expeditions to Treat in case I need it, and then to be honest, there's a lot of good ones here for early on in the game, but at this point in the game they're not too relevant, so I'm just gonna just gonna grab some. Prepared spells, we don't care about this, we can do this later. I'll talk a bit about that once we are talking about itemization and stuff like that. Back to Cleric, and the rest of the levels are gonna be Cleric, so it's just, there's not a lot of choices to be honest, you got just get what you get. We get the Radiance of Dawn here as our light subclass ability, it's an AoE effect that deals Radiant damage, it's great. Next level, there's nothing interesting there, just still Cleric, we're still going Cleric, and we are gonna be. And for our level 4 we get a little more interesting choices, or our level 5 I guess, but level 4 Cleric. We get access to Resistance now, I like to take it up here, and then the most important part here, the Feet. For our feet, we have the following options. We can either take uh, Ability Improvement, give plus 2 to Wisdom. This will up the safety C of our offensive spells like CC, Hypnotic Pattern, or Damage Fireball, stuff like that. Or we could go for Heavily Armored, or the Extra Armor Proficiency. There's also the option to take Dual Wielder to get the ability to wield two non-light weapons. This allows you to have a rather strong setup of double support weapon. But I'm not short resting enough for this to be viable for me. It might be for you if you short rest between every fight. This is probably the one you should pick, Dual Wielder. And I'll talk a bit about why once we get to the items. For now, let's just get on with the build here. 
level 5 cleric, we now get some nice level 3 cleric spells and uh, the upgraded turn on that for extra radiant damage upon turning. Level 6 here we get the important subclass feature that I was talking about, improved warding flare. When an enemy attacks an ally, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll, possibly causing the attack to miss. This ability is freaking awesome. So once you have this, whenever one of your allies gets attacked, you will get the option to have them reroll that attack. Um, at least once per turn, at least. And for the last level, just another level of cleric. Good. That should be it for the build. Let's take a look at Illithid abilities. The only ones I would suggest taking on Shadowheart is uh, the, actually the only one is Perilous Stakes, but you need to get Transfuse Health in order to get to it. Perilous Stakes is not something you need as per se, but if you're getting into a hard fight, this can be once per long rest used to give the boss vulnerability to all damage. This just means they fall over like a stack of bricks. You're basically halving their hit points. The extra bit of healing does basically nothing. You should be able to, to burn them down extremely fast with this ability. So this is a very powerful support ability that you can use once per long rest. Keep it in mind as an option at least. For items, and this is where the build gets a little more interesting, Warped Headband of Intellect allows you to uh, equip up to four wizard spells, or prepare, I guess it's called. I would suggest Conjure Minor Elemental as one of them, so you can have it cast beforehand and you can swap it out again afterwards. I like having Find Familiar because Find Familiar is important quite powerful to be honest. Let's, uh, let's say we take that here. Uh, I do need to do a short rest before I can use it. So in order to do that I would definitely summon a raven. The ability that the raven has to blind people when on its attack is very strong in that it can give you a character's advantage and it just works once again into the support aspect of Shadowheart here. So definitely go for that one. Other than that just pick up whichever ones you, you please. You have access to haste if you have found it on the scroll. I like having Hypnotic Pattern available, just in case you, you need to CC something, which is rare. And lastly, whichever ones you want, to be honest. Uh, you can get some very good ones here. Back to the items. For our armor, I'm using Adamantite Scale Mail. This is because it's one of the strongest medium armors I have available, and because all incoming damage is reduced by one. This effect is quite nice in that it allows you to, when you're using Warding Bunt, and your, the damage from the warding burn gets halved before it goes to you. This extra point of damage reduction actually works quite well with that effect. So it's a good idea to use this one. Also, you don't get critically hit, so that's always nice. If you get hit by a melee attack, the attacker sent reeling. This is more penalty to attack rolls, meaning they'll have a harder time to hit you next time, and you have time to heal up in between. For the next item I talk about is the evasive shoes. These gives armor class plus one. That's another set of shoes you could be using, but they are a little, uh, little less powerful, so it's mostly early on until you, you get these. The extra armor class is nice, of course. For our weapon setup, I would be using the Blood of Lathander in main hand, specifically for the Lathander's light ability. Sheds holy light in a 20 foot radius. In combat, fiends and undead standing in the light are blinded. Once again, blind, powerful debuff. So you just have to move Shadowheart near them and they will be blinded, most likely. And that is awesome. You don't really attack with this weapon too often, so it doesn't matter too much, but it, it's still nice. And for our shield, I'm using Shield of Scorching Reprisal to get the fire resistance, grant resistance to fire damage here. We also get access to Blazing Retaliation, which is a bonus action on a short rest cooldown to up your armor class by one for a turn and give a little bit of damage to people attacking you. That's less relevant. We are using the Coruscation Ring to have our cantrips and really any of our damaging spells, fireball as well, inflict radiating orb upon the ones that get hit by it. Affected entity has minus one to attack rolls per remaining turn, so minus two. It also sheds bright light in an area surrounding it. The bright light thing, less relevant, but the minus one to attack rolls whenever you deal spell damage is quite nice because it allows you a cantrip ability that debuffs the enemies as well. And then I have the necklace of elements and augmentation to get your cantrips to deal just a tiny bit of extra damage. It's it's not too relevant, but getting your spellcasting ability modifier on top of it can be okay. And then there's the package of potion killing I'd uh, talk about here. I'm using double hand crossbow, not because she actually knows how to use it. You can see she's not even proficient. Attack is horrible, but it doesn't matter because the only thing we're going to be attacking with this is potions. If we take just a, a regular potion of healing here, one of the small ones, and place it, we can place it 
amongst our, our characters. And we can use a bonus action to shoot it now, and this will trigger the following items. Elrider's Pride. When you heal another creature, it gains resistance against bludgeoning, piercing and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks. Blade Ward effect, it's quite strong in combat. And also the Whispering Promise. When you heal a creature, it gains a plus 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and saving throws for 2 turns. This is the Bless effect without the concentration. It only lasts for 2 turns, but 2 turns is quite a lot in combat. And if you act before the rest of your party, you should be able to have them set up with this ability just by using your bonus action. You still have everything else left to do as you can. The boots I was talking about that you could be using and that I was using earlier is a Boots of Aid and Comfort. Also an unheal effect, extra 3 temporary hit points. It's, it's less powerful at this point, I'd say, but it's quite good early on where 3 extra hit points is, actually matters. The other item I'd like to talk about here is the Fala Aloof. This allows us to cast Fala Aloof Melody here, where we can either Shriek, which uh, means that every time the affected entities, anyone within 20 feet range, takes damage, they will take an extra 1d4 thunder damage. This is an extra damage instance, so it will proc a lot of effects. I'm talking that, about that more in my Karlik video. You can go and watch that uh, once it gets up for, for more info on that. But it, it can be very strong if you if you stack uh, on damage uh, effects, on, on attack damage effects with your weapons. The other less breaking the game version is just to use the sync for yet another Bless-like effect. This is not Bless though, so it will stack with Bless. It gives 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and charisma, wisdom and intelligence saving throws, and it stacks with Bless and it doesn't use up your concentration. So if you go straight into combat and you use Fala Aloof Sing and you shoot a potion of uh, healing, just a regular one, near your party, they suddenly have plus 2d4 extra to hit. And that is very strong for a support uh, turn. And then of course we have the Elixir Vigilance Honor, because we, we don't care that much about her actions, we only want her to be able to act before the rest of her, the party, and this allows her to do that. If we are in a sticky situation where we got surprised, she will not be surprised and she will have the option to hypnotic pattern to take out a couple of enemies so they have to waste their turns. The last ability I'd like to talk about before we end this video is the um, permanent C invisibility that you can pick up in Act 1. If you ask Volo to try and cure your condition, he will end up blocking out your eye and replacing it with a new one, you get a permanent C invisibility. This is perfect for a build like this, where we're going to be staying near melee anyways, and it just so happens that the eye in question is almost the same color as Shadow Heart's own eye, so it's not something you will notice if you don't like the cosmetic idea of having two different colored eyes on her. That's my Shadow Heart. She's a very strong support. I'm very happy with how she's playing as well, especially in Act 2, because of the Blood of Lathander uh, effect. This will get less powerful, I believe, in Act 3. I don't know what the setup of monsters are there. Might even get less powerful once we get into the Moonrise Towers. But for the first part of Act 2, this is amazing. So thank you for joining, if you have been. I've been Chandra, and you've most definitely been awesome. Do not forget to do the YouTube stuff, and bye bye. And for those still around, yes, this one took a lot longer to come out than usual. I've been having some trouble with my wrists and it's still acting up a bit, so it's a kind of hard to edit these things. I hope that the next one will be a little faster. We're going for Karlek as the next one. Yay! So. Sorry about the wait time, and have a very nice day.